A to Z process. Turning all waste into usable fuels. A. Assessment of waste. The process begins with identifying and evaluating the waste stream. Waste varies wildly, household trash like food scraps, paper and plastics, industrial byproducts such as chemical sludge and metals, agricultural residues like crop stalks and manure, and even hazardous materials such as medical waste and batteries. Each type has a unique composition, organic, inorganic, wet, dry, combustible or non-combustible. Teams analyze moisture content, calorific value, which means energy potential and contaminants to decide the best conversion method. Balm, bagging and collection. Waste is collected from homes, businesses, farms and factories. Municipal solid waste, or MSW, gets bagged curbside, while industrial waste might arrive in barrels or bulk containers. Trucks haul it to processing facilities, often sorting en route or at transfer stations to separate recyclables like glass and metals from fuel-bound waste. C. Categorization and sorting, at the facility waste is dumped onto conveyor belts. Workers and machines, including optical sorters, magnets and eddy current separators, divide it into streams. Organics such as food and yard waste, plastics, paper and cardboard metals, and inorganics like glass and concrete. Hazardous waste gets flagged for special handling. Sorting maximizes efficiency. Organics might go to biogas, plastics to pyrolysis and mixed MSW to gasification. D. Drying. Wet waste, like food scraps or sewage sludge, needs drying to boost energy yield. Industrial dryers or solar drying beds reduce moisture, which is often 50 to 70 percent in organic waste, to below 20 percent. Dry waste burns better, gasifies cleaner and pyrolyzes more efficiently. Plastics and paper skip this step and less soaked. E. Energy Potential Evaluation. Technicians measure the waste's energy content, calorific value in megajoules per kilogram. Paper and plastics clock in at 15 to 20 megajoules per kilogram, organics at 10 to 15 megajoules per kilogram, while wet sludge might be 5 megajoules per kilogram pre-drying. This dictates the process, high energy waste suits incineration or gasification, low energy organics fit anaerobic digestion. F. Fragmentation or shredding. Waste gets shredded into uniform pieces, one to six inches, using industrial shredders. This increases surface area, making it easier to burn, decompose or gasify. Plastics become flakes, wood turns to chips, and mixed trash gets a coarse grind. Shredding also removes trapped air, compacting the feedstock. GE gasification. For mixed or carbon-rich waste like wood, plastics and municipal solid waste, gasification kicks in. Waste is heated to 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius in a low oxygen chamber. Instead of burning, it breaks down into cingas, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and solid ash. Cingas can power turbines or be refined into liquid fuels like diesel. Ash cools into slag for construction. H. Harvesting biogas or anaerobic digestion. Organic waste, like food scraps, manure and sewage, goes into sealed tanks. Bacteria digest it in an oxygen-free environment over a period of 20 to 40 days, producing biogas, which is about 60% methane and 40% carbon dioxide. This biogas is captured, filtered and then burned for heat or electricity, or it can be upgraded to biomethane for pipelines. The leftover digestate becomes fertilizer. IA, incineration. Non-recyclable combustible waste such as paper, textiles and mixed trash is incinerated at temperatures ranging from 850 to 1200 degrees Celsius in a furnace. The heat generated boils water into steam which drives turbines to produce electricity, about 550 kilowatt hours per tonne of waste. Modern plants scrub emissions like dioxins and nitrogen oxides with lime and filters leaving ash that is about 10 to 15 percent of the original volume. This ash can be used for landfills or as a road base. J. Jet fuel synthesis. Singers from gasification can be processed via the Fischer-Tropsch method, catalyzed at temperatures between 200 and 350 degrees Celsius to create synthetic hydrocarbons. These hydrocarbons then become jet fuel, which is kerosene-like after refining. 
This fuel powers planes with a lower carbon footprint compared to fossil kerosene. Companies like Fulcrum Bioenergy are doing this with municipal solid waste. Right. Kiln processing, also known as pyrolysis. Plastics, tires and woody waste enter pyrolysis kilns, which are heated to temperatures ranging from 300 to 900 degrees Celsius without the presence of oxygen. This process thermally decomposes them into bio-oil, which is a liquid fuel, singers, a gaseous fuel and biochar, a solid carbon. The bio-oil can run diesel engines, the singers powers generators and the biochar can be used to amend soil or sequester carbon. L. Liquefaction, specifically hydrothermal liquefaction. Wet waste, such as sludge or food scraps, undergoes hydrothermal liquefaction. In a pressurized reactor with temperatures between 250 to 400 degrees Celsius and pressures ranging from 10 to 25 megapascals, water remains in a liquid state, breaking down the waste into bio-crude oil. This bio-crude oil is then refined into diesel or gasoline, effectively handling high moisture loads that gasification just can't manage. Mies methane capture, also known as landfill gas capture. Old landfills naturally emit methane from decomposing organic materials. Wells are drilled into the waste to extract this landfill gas, which is composed of 50% methane and 50% carbon dioxide. This gas is then piped to engines or turbines to generate electricity, producing up to 10 megawatts per large site. Alternatively, it can be purified into renewable natural gas, or RNG, for use in vehicles. Neutralization of hazards. Hazardous waste, like batteries and medical sharps, requires pre-treatment. Acids are neutralized with bases, toxins are stabilized, and radioactive bits are isolated. Plasma gasification then zaps them at 4,000 degrees Celsius, turning them into singers and vitrified slag, which is glass-like and non-leachable for safe disposal or use. Oxygen control. Processes like gasification and pyrolysis tweak oxygen levels. Gasification uses just enough, about 30 to 40% of combustion needs to form singers, not ash. Pyrolysis uses none, avoiding combustion entirely. Incineration, conversely, floods oxygen for a full burn-off. Purification. Raw fuels, singers, biogas, bio-oil contain impurities like sulfur tar and particulates. Scrubbers, filters and catalysts clean them. Singers gets desulfurized, biogas loses carbon dioxide for biomethane, and bio-oil is distilled to remove water and acids, ensuring usability in engines or grids. Q. Quantification of output. Yields vary. Incineration gives 550 kilowatt hours per ton of electricity. Gasification produces one to two cubic meters of singers per kilogram of waste. Anaerobic digestion yields 200 to 400 liters of biogas per kilogram of organics. Pyrolysis makes 0.3 to 0.5 liters of bio oil per kilogram of plastic. Teams measure this to optimize processes and predict energy supply. RO refining crude outputs turn into finished fuels. Singers becomes ethanol or methanol via catalysis. Bio oil upgrades to biodiesel or gasoline through hydro treating. Biogas refines to 99% methane, also known as renewable natural gas. Refineries blend these with additives for stability and performance in cars, planes or heaters. S. Storage. Fuels are stored based on form biogas in pressurized tanks, singers in pipelines, bio oil in barrels, ethanol in vats. Slag and digestate pile up in silos or bags. Facilities ensure no leaks. Methane's flammable. Singus is toxic if inhaled. T. Transportation. Fuels hit the market. Pipelines carry renewable natural gas, trucks haul bio oil or ethanol, and electricity feeds the grid. Solid byproducts like slag and biochar ship to construction sites or farms. Logistics match fuel type to demand, such as jet fuel to airports and biogas to rural stoves. U. Utilization. 
end users burn the fuel singers in turbines, biogas in cookstoves, bio oil in trucks, ethanol in cars and hydrogen in fuel cells. Electricity powers homes, one tonne of municipal solid waste might light 50 houses for a day. Byproducts like slag build roads and digestate fertilizes crops. V. Validation of efficiency. Engineers track energy conversion rates. Incineration hits 15 to 27 percent efficiency, converting heat to electricity. Gasification reaches 35 to 40 percent, while anaerobic digestion achieves 50 percent efficiency, producing biogas from organics. Losses such as heat and unprocessed waste are minimized with tech upgrades like plasma arcs. W stands for waste reduction. When we talk about volume shrinkage, incineration can cut waste by 85 to 90 percent. Gasification reduces it by 70 to 80 percent, and digestion can shrink it by 60 to 70 percent. As a result, landfills shrink and methane emissions drop. Just to put it in perspective, methane is 25 times worse than carbon dioxide, plus our reliance on fossil fuels dips. Imagine this, if all US municipal solid waste were processed, we could produce 50 billion gallons of alcohol fuel yearly, according to MIT estimates. Exo-xenophobic contaminant removal. Foreign contaminants like chlorine in PVC and mercury in batteries get extracted. Pre-sorting pulls out metals and glass, while chemical washes strip away toxins. Plasma gasification then neutralizes the rest, ensuring clean fuel and safe slag. Why? Yield optimization AI and sensors fine-tune processes by adjusting temperature, oxygen or feedstock mix. Pilot plants test various blends like 60% plastic and 40% wood to maximize singers or bio-oil production. The goal is for every kilogram of waste to yield the most fuel possible. Z, zero waste vision. The end game ties it all together. All waste, organic, plastic, hazardous, gets converted into fuels like electricity, biogas, jet fuel and hydrogen, or materials like slag and fertilizer. Nothing is wasted and landfills vanish. A circular economy emerges, powered by trash. Summary. Inputs include all waste types such as MSW, organics, plastics industrial and hazardous waste. Processes involve sorting, drying, shredding incineration, gasification, pyrolysis, digestion, liquefaction and landfill gas capture. Outputs range from electricity, biogas, singers bio-oil, ethanol, methanol, hydrogen and jet fuel to RNG plus slag and digestate. The scale can vary from 25 tonnes per day for small plants to billions of gallons yearly on a global scale. This A to Z process maps the life cycle and is adaptable to any waste type and fuel need.